Welcome to GMI Connect. This podcast is under the helm of Apostle Dr. Glenn England and Prophetess Karen England, founders of Joshua Ministries International, a place where God's presence is evident. Don't forget to subscribe for more uplifting, thought-provoking, and insightful messages. Be blessed. This morning I want to minister a word and I pray that the Bible said those who have ear hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I want you to open your spirit. Oh Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we depend on you today. Lord, we pray that the word will come from my mouth be acceptable unto you, oh my Lord. Minister to your people today, Lord. Strengthen your people, Lord God. God, let me be your messenger today. Touch my tongue at the pen of a ready writer. Speak to me, Lord. Let somebody hope arise. Let somebody faith arise. God, I pray that God, you will take your people into a greater demand in your spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before we get into the the message, there, there is a few scriptures that I want us to read. And when we read these scriptures, I want you might say, Pastor, what, why you re read these verses of scriptures? And I want to let you know that these verses of scriptures are going to get you into the understanding of where this message is taken from. Let's look at first thing. I want to tell your neighbor, promise. Say, so neighbor, there is a promise. You understand, man? When God give a promise, listen to me, you got to hold on to the promise. You understand? In spite of what you're saying, you got to stick home and hold on to the promise. A promise is very important. A promise, when God make a promise, he really make a covenant. And we speak about covenant last week. It, it means that God make agreement. And sometimes when God look, he can't find nobody faithful to keep that covenant. He keep it with himself. To, that can help us to come into it. So the first thing I want you to is I want you to touch, touch your neighbor. The neighbor, this is a promise to you. Come on. Say to, turn to somebody and say, this is a promise to you. Hallelujah. It's taken from the book, Jeremiah 29, 11. Read for me, my daughter. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So the promise is that God said, don't care what's happening, it's going to work out on your behalf. And he went on and he said it in the Old Testament. Now, he, now in the New Testament, he even enforced it. Let's look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So here now in 29, in, in, in um, Jeremiah 29 um, and verse 11, he give us a promise say that, listen to me, he know the thought he towards you, the thought of peace and expect the end. And then in, in Romans chapter um, 8 and, and 28, now he's saying to you, don't care what happening in your life, my promise to you is that I will not love this thing to destroy you. It will work for your your good. Everything will work for your good. You understand me? So we have a we have two promises that God now is saying to us. This is my promise towards you. And then now the next verse of scripture I want to give to you is from First Timothy chapter one verses eighteen to nineteen. And then we're gonna get into the message. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by then mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Okay, so now you have promise, you have promise, purpose, and now he's now telling you how to fight. So you have to fight now, you fight with the prophecy. The thing that God predicted over your life is what the enemy is going to fight you with. I'll fight you against. You understand? So every person, everybody that are in Christ, there is there going to be a warfare. But you understand, the warfare is a fixed warfare. You are a winner. In spite of what you're saying, hearing, feeling, that thing God saying, I will cause you to win. Just continue decreeing your prophecy. Tell your neighbor, proclaim your prophecy. 
Come on, you're not hearing me. I want you to say it like you mean it. Like you, you really know what you're saying. Say, proclaim your prophecy. Okay, so now my, the message that I've given to you today is a message of the pit experiences is a part of God's plan. Tell your neighbor, the pit experience is a part of God's plan. Come on, you come on. You're not you're not working with me. Come on, work with me. Say your pit experience is a part of God's plan. See, sometimes we don't understand when we are in certain situation because we don't feel comfortable. We think it's not a part of God's plan. Sometimes God loves you to go in some situation that seem like it's the devil plan. But listen to me, it's God's plan. Meaning that God knows you. We go through this thing. God I know you will experience this thing. So God already know how to get you out the thing. Tell your neighbor you got to decree what God says. And the first thing I want you to understand clearly, I want you to understand this morning. Where there is a dream, a prophecy, there is a pit. Come on, come on. I said where there is a dream, a prophecy, you will also experience the pit for those things. You understand? Your pit will work for you. See, what, what you, sometimes you fall in an area of your life, you don't know how to get out, you don't know what is going on, but you want to know why I'm in this pit. I want to let you know your pit is for the pit stop that God is doing something he's he's all you know, taking away some things he's moving some things of your life so when you are in the pit it's to teach you how to trust God yes. he means to trust God in the unknown how can I trust God when I don't know what's going on he said hold on to your prophecy if I speak a thing about you that thing is what will help you survive in your pit tell your neighbor you will survive you will come out the pit you will not stay in where you are right now you see your pit is for a period your pit is for a season your pit is a timing and your pit is to get rid of things God nobody want to be with you when you are in a pit and then when you are in a situation where everybody looking down on you, your pit experience is to clean things around you. Amen. You will know who is your friend when you're in your pit. You will know who is your real body when you're in a pit. You will know who got your back when you're in a pit. Because when you're in a position that is not comfortable, it's not likely to make you famous, people don't want to be with you. People don't want to hang out with you. Because all they're seeing is your pit. Yeah. All they're seeing. And let me tell you something. Some folks will never let you out your pit. Your pit is a temporary position. Let's look in, in scripture. See if there is anything that we can read of the Bible that can help us. Let's go to the book of, Gen of Genesis 37. Genesis 37. Reading from verse 23. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. Stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Steady. See, one thing that you have to understand there is a stripping period of your life. You'll be stripped of stuff to be placed in the pit. Because what they thought, they thought that if we strip him, we destroy his identity. If we strip him, we make him be, be not be a, of his inheritance. Some folks think by stripping your name, by accusing you, by saying all manner evil, that thing will reign in your life. Listen to me. Let them strip you because they can't strip the purpose of God in your life. They can't strip your dream. Some people want to strip your dream but listen to me one mistake they made is that they love Joseph to decree who he were to them come on somebody sometimes God will love you to speak who you are when others can't see it the Bible said in when you look at Genesis 37:23, it 
47, verse 1 to 5, it talked that they were, they were angry because of his dream. Some folks vexed because you have a vision. Some folks vexed because you have a calling. Some folks vexed because God have, have an investment inside of you. They're after your dream, but they can't kill your dream. Your pit can't kill your dream. Your pit can't stop you from dreaming. So he was in the pit and they hate on him when he tell them who he is. Some people will hate you because you have a dream. They got everything but all you have is a dream just into. They got all the things to show like life working out for them and all you saying to them I got a dream. <laughs> I got a dream. You understand me? They got the big house you got a dream. They got a fancy car. You got a dream. Come on, somebody. They got a wife. You got a dream. They got a husband. And all you have is a dream. Something that we predict but not seen yet. Listen to me. The problem is not when the person don't see your dream. It's when you ain't see your dream. Yeah. <laughs> so Joseph saw God potential for him and God purpose for him and because he saw it he proclaimed it see if you got a vision and you don't proclaim that thing it will not be established you have to speak like God yeah. come on and in spite of what I see around me I'm bigger than all my problems. Come on, somebody. I'm bigger than all my setback. I'm believe. Come on. I'm bigger than all the name folks call me. Because I have a dream. They see you and they say, well, you are good for nothing. But you say, I got a dream. <laughs> they see you and say, nobody wants you. I got a dream. So because you have your dream, and you proclaim who God say you are, the next step is your pit. And in the pit experience, the pit is a place of loneliness. And the Bible says, the Bible said, they put him in a pit where there was no water, no source of, of life. So God will keep you in your pit. When you don't have nothing to help you out, guess what? God help you when you're in your pit. Because in your pit, you can't get hand out. In your pit, <laughs> nobody can see your essence because all they see in you is in a pit but say to your neighbor say neighbor God I love you to be in the pit <laughs> so Joseph was in the pit but when you are set for a pit God have, have a divine plan. Tell God have a divine plan. Those who show you in, those who agreed and covenant together, an evil covenant to put you in a position to take you out the family bloodline, to, to, to say you're dead. In the pit, they say you're dead. Can't nobody see you, so they say you're dead. But they did not understand that God have a plan with the pit. And God always has somebody, a divine person in the group, to show your mercy. Yeah. So the God we got a woman called, um, what the brother name is? Um, eh? No, Judah the laughter. The first one was Reuben. You need a Reuben. Tell your neighbor, when you are placed in a pit, you need a Reuben to say, let's not kill him, but put him in a pit. But see, you had a Reuben that Reuben represent mercy. But you need, you have mercy, but you need Judah. You need a praise when you're in the pit. You have to learn to praise yourself, praise your God when you're in a position that you don't understand. You got to praise God when you're in a place when you're lonely. You got to praise God when all manner of evil are saying about you. God said, don't fight back the way they 
fight in you. Don't get down dirty and speak like they speak. When you are in a position, when you are in a pit, because you know there's a prophecy of your life, you got to praise. You got to say, in spite I am in this position, I praise your God. In spite I am in this position, I don't understand everything, but God, I lift my hands to you. I praise you. Some of your pit might be a sickness. Some of your pit might be a divorce. Some of your pit might be a career loss. But if you are in your pit, you got to praise God. See, when you start to praise God, when you're in a position that seems lonely, <laughs> I don't know how much of you ever been in a pit. I don't know how much of you ever been in a place when God says something, you see the opposite. When God says you're supposed to be this, you're seeing that. What do you do when you're placed in a pit even by your family? Joseph was the 12th son of his father. The Bible put it, he say his father loved him more because he, he birthed him out of his old age. Yeah. And the Bible says his brothers didn't like him. You want to know when God called you? Say, ask me, say, Pastor, when, how do I know when God called you? When God called you, you it's, it's likely that even short folks hate you. Yeah. It's likely that the people that supposed to be your brother's keeper, them now saying keep him in a pit. It's likely, come on, when God called you, see all of them were friends. And they were before Joseph. But they saw something in Joseph yeah. by his decree. And they say like this: shall we bow down? To that forward young man. I come to tell you. Your enemy know you. Before you become who God called you to be. God will love them to see something. In you. That's something you don't see in yourself. And they decide. Shut that boy mouth up. Let's kill his dream. Let's murder him. But God protecting your investment. God protecting that thing that he says about you. God protecting that thing that the enemy is saying, I cannot love you to come forward. I cannot love your dream to speak a reality. God even loved Joseph's father to see that the dream will come to pass. There are some folks in your life. God will never let them die till they see your dream. Say, Lord, don't let me enemy die. <laughs> See, if your enemies die, you don't really get the celebration. They have to see what God says. They got to see. Because God, God has to show himself who he is. God said, the thought I have towards you is a thought of peace and expected end. God said, I got your end out. Amen. And God said, okay. I got your, 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 your end right out, but I want to let you know, everything working for your good. Well, Apostle, I'm going through some sickness. God said, I'm going to show you I'm the God that he lets see. God, Apostle, I lose my job. I don't have no money. I'm going to show you I am your supplier. God, Apostle, Apostle, everybody forsake me. I want to show you I'm your comforter. Yes. See, every pit comes with experience. Yes. See, in your pit, you will get to know who God is and you will get to know who you are. Amen. Because sometimes the pit is there to block out everything that is tracking you and get you to focus on your prophecy. Focus on God's purpose. Focus on God's plan. And then you start to see that thing. And when you start to see who God called you to be and really to be, then you come out your pit. But the pit is for, the pit is a plan of God divine. Joseph, the problem is, and this is the biggest problem, it when people think you're still in a pit when you're out the pit there are some folks who never want to celebrate you and they seek what God make you to be 
they will never want to give you the credit. But listen to me. Let them just stay in the pit. And you continue moving. Because after the pit. The, no, no, no. No. After the pit, uh, uh, my daughter, is prison. Because God said, if you come out the pit, a prison can do you nothing. Because when you're in the pit, you're alone. So when you come in a prison, the same attitude you had in the pit is the same attitude you must go in the prison. And the prison attitude is that God is my keeper. Amen. Come on. I shall not want. He made me to lie down in green pasture. Come on. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. See, when you got that understanding that your whole life is a prediction the prison can't do you nothing Amen. come on you, you see the pit help you to adjust yourself to play uncomfortable feet things so he went in a, you know, out of the pit you know he went in part of his house and then he they accused him and they put him in a, inside a, a prison so in the prison now See, tell some folks I trouble you. <laughs> I said, Turn to your neighbor said, You trouble me, stop it. <laughs> and furthermore, just tell anybody, say, I speak to anybody who trouble me. Them I know and I don't know. Stop troubling me. Because every time you trouble me, I prosper more. Because every time you trouble me, boy. You mean you put him in a prison and the prison being successful? Because people think what you wear is the most important thing. It no, is what you carry. Amen. So even you strip him of his coat. You strip him of his coat. You take away his coat. Take away me coat, you can't take away me anointing. Yes. Yes. Come on, somebody, somebody need to hear this. Yes. See, they strip you of your coat that represent many country, many nations, because each color represents where you're going. Yes. But the thing taken where this is important to what is in you. You can strip me of my coat, my coat of many color but you can't strip me of the anointing in my life Amen. so they strip him and they left him I said let me see now let me see if he prophecy going to talk let me see if he dream going to come to pass they put him in a pit tell your neighbor I will survive any pit come on come on come on come on come on come on I I want you to prophesy to that person next to you. I want you to speak to that person and say you will you will survive any pit that comes your way. You will survive in spite what you it look like. I want to tell somebody. I want you to speak to them. I want to hold you tap them on the hand, tap them on the shoulder and say listen to me. You will survive anything you go through. You will survive. Hallelujah. Come on, tell your neighbor, saying in all the rest of your life, your pit will be speaking against to you. Your pit have to be silent. You only there temporary. You only in that prison for a time, but you're about to sh come on, come out your pit. Uh, and listen to me. Like I said to you, some people never want, never believe that you are not in that place where you used to be. So the name where they used to call you. And now God take you out, they still won't call you so. The way they used to look at you before you know Jesus, they still won't look at the, the way at you. Yeah. They won't call you a con artist. They still won't call you a liar. They still won't call you a fornicator. They still want to do that. Because all they're thinking about where you were. But they, they can't see where you done gone. Some people will stick in where you were yeah. and never come in where you gone. Tell you David, God always loves somebody to go and search where you are. God always loves them. 
at the Bible table, you look at verse 18. In, the, in Genesis um, 37, verse 18 to 19. I want you to see something. I want you to see something. Say, say let them search. They will not find me. Come on, say, I'm not in that position no more. Come on, I might not be where I want to be, but guess what? I am not where I used to be. Tell your neighbor, that my used to be. Come on, say, that is me used to be. That is not where I am now. It's my used to be. Come on. I used to be sick. I used to be poor. Come on. I used to be busted, disgusted. I used to be, come on. All the used to be. I used to be named that name. I used to have this kind of way and that way. But that is my used to be. They are not in my present now. Say, neighbor, they are in my loss. <laughs> come on. They are not in my winning. The folks talk in you uh, you used to be. You know, folks would say that I, I remember she, that who she were. Do you know her now? Do you know him now? The folks want to tie you into what you used to be. Yeah. <laughs> always want to talk. I, I remember him. And I always remember all the bad things about you. And they want to bring it in your future. My father told me a day, he said, Glenn, let me tell you something. Growing up, there are some people you see in town have big positions, big jobs, and they went to the big yard and nobody remember them. He said, there are people who went to jail and their life changed, and now you're calling them Mr. because you don't know where they used to be, but you only could see where they are now. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't let nobody judge you where you used to be. Let them see you for who you are now. Come on. Do not answer no name that was your used to be. Let them call you who you are now. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, call me right. Come on, call me right. Let's read it, my daughter. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Listen to me. They say, listen to me. Let's kill the boy. Let's kill him. Why do they want to kill you? It's not because you got the best here, though. It's not because you're the most educated. See, people... And care so much about that. They care about what you carry. Yeah. And what the boy carry was a dream. Yeah. A prediction. Something ain't happened yet. Some folks are afraid of your true appearance. Because they can see it. And what they will say, oh, we got to kill that thing. Kill him. That the dream don't come to pass. Some people is after your dream. Kill it. Don't let that thing come to pass. When I look and I study, I look at um, KFC. The man was frying chicken. And now worldwide, this, this um, franchise is in nearly all the nations. He had a dream. Do you understand me? When you got a dream and you Speak your dream. God say, okay, your dream, you speak by faith. I will bring it to pass. When you carry a dream, if you don't have haters connected to your dream, that is your dream, not God's dream. When, when it's God's dream, guess what, guess what, come on, come on. When it's God's dream, you're going to hate us. When it's God's dream, God's vision, Folks ain't like you. He always boasting. But they ain't understand you're not boasting in yourself. You're boasting in God. Because when you got God's dream, you can't bring it to pass. You depend on God to bring the thing to pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mean, you hate me because I have a dream? <laughs> you hate me for something that is predicted to come to pass. So you think what you're trying to do is to kill me to block the dream. Tell your neighbor, listen to me. Say, neighbor, I don't care whether you try or they try and everybody try. 
that thing going to come to pass. And you're going to live and not die. So he had a dream. So they decided, kill the, kill the dreamer. Let's go back to what I was saying. God always lets somebody go back to your pit to see if you're there. So Reuben went back and the pit was empty. Because your pit is just for the experience to bring you to the understanding who God is. You cannot flunk the process of your pit. See, you need your pit that you could go to the prison. And you need the prison that you could go to your palace. Amen. Because in all of these experience, it's that God is loving you to appreciate who he is. Connect with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at JNISKB for information on upcoming events, services, inspirational quotes, and scriptures. Thank you for listening to JNI Connect where we are believing, confessing, and living by the word of God.